Um, next presenter, we're going uh, back online uh, to Ray Milidoni. Um, so hopefully Ray's all teed up, ready to go. You may know him from his um, Farming Secrets a news, a newsletters that have come out and also he's with MetaTree's NFT. His topic, how blockchain, crypto and NFTs can be used in the agriculture space and how to ask better questions. Um, Ray, if you're there, over to you. Hi, thank you so much everyone for uh, joining me via this uh, satellite link, I guess. Um, it is all new technology, so bear with me as I get used to all this virtual stuff. But I am talking about Web3 NFTs and it's all new jargon. And I just want everyone to ask better questions in regards to instead of resisting what this future could look like, saying, how could I embrace this new trend and put it into my business or top of mind and being open to the idea that this could potentially be the way that we interact in the future, whether it be blockchain, a digital currency, or using NFTs to certify the way that we farm and do best practices. So I just want to show this little chart and introduce you to a couple of different um, terminologies. The web has gone through many phases. There's web one, web two, and what we're starting to move into is what is called web three. And so I remember at high school getting really interested in this whole web one space, building websites, learning how to code, teaching myself how to do things and being an early adopter, uh, starting my first business building websites uh, during the Netscape time old enough to remember what Netscape was. And that was really kind of arguably decentralized internet because when you built a website or you're a big business, you had your own web server physically in your own office and location. But then Web2 all this cloud and uh, that's kind of where all these big social media platforms happen. And Web2 saw everything move from just a read-only website experience to a bit of a read and write. All of a sudden, you could be a YouTuber. You could create content and load videos onto YouTube, but YouTube owned your video content. But more so, Amazon was who they were hosting with. And so then Amazon technically owned uh, the YouTube platform or Google servers, and everything kind of became centralized. And Web3 is about unstitching a little bit of that and turning things back to this decentralized uh, economy. And the chart on the screen there just shows like some dollar figures um, to what potentially the Web3 space could be worth in the future. And with the way that they're printing money, it could 10x that. But if, you know, things are that it will be uh, uh, something that we need to keep an eye on. And that's why I ask everyone not to sit there with their arms crossed going, oh, I don't like this Bitcoin and Ethereum stuff. Um, <clears throat> it's all technology I don't understand because there was one point where we didn't really know how websites were built and we didn't see how social media was going to play a part. And we never thought that we would invite strangers into our house, sleeping on the couch using an Airbnb or jumping into a stranger's car using Uber. And here we are where all those systems and technologies are seen as innovation and ways for our civilization to leap forward. And so when I say ask better questions, think about how can Bitcoin, Ethereum and lots of other blockchain technology help us advance forward into the future and not sit there thinking that this is never going to be a possibility. And so these are some of the logos that you're probably familiar with on a Web 1 and a Web 2 space. But all these other new logos in the Web 3 space it's like, where, what, what are they and what do they do? And a lot of the solutions in the Web3 space haven't even been thought of yet. Um, th there's so much new ideas coming to surface and ways of solving these problems that the same ways we never thought we were going to be sharing photos on social media and making crazy dances on TikTok and following trends on Snapchat and using filters to change the, our appearances, back in the 90s and early 2000s, we really don't know what the world's going to look like. And whether that is a metaverse world where we sit virtually and have fake lives on the internet, or whether it just means that we're able to verify things from a more decentralized platform where we, the people, own the information and host it together collectively um, using all the you know computer resources together. So how can blockchain and ag kind of come together? And I'm sure during the conference, you've probably met companies who are already starting to embrace blockchain technology. Um, but in a snapshot, blockchain is basically a store of data. It's think of it as a database, but every so often there's a new block that's created. And once that block is created into the blockchain, um, 
it's there forever. And all these computers around the world are hosting a copy of that data. So it can never be manipulated or changed. It's kind of locked there um, and encrypted. And new blocks are added to this blockchain, hence the name, uh, every so often, depending which chain you're engaged with, they have different rules of how often these blocks are created and who gets rewarded and how much energy consumption uh, is being created from that. But I want you to meet Jack and Jill. They're going to be our little characters today where we're going to get a little bit of an understanding of how blockchain can actually help understand Jack and Jill's journey. Now, while they're here together with us today, they never started like that. And they've both had really different lives. And with using the blockchain, we're able to take a snapshot of how they have come to be Jack and Jill. So in the bottom left hand corner, you'll see a little yellow block. That's the first block to Jack's uh, journey. So Jack's on the left at the moment, and he was growing on pasture raised, uh, you know, well looked after pastures where Jill was kind of tilled and messed around and the soil organic matter was pretty low and not really good. The next part of their life, you know, Jack had, you know, nice biology in the soil and, you know, the farmer was taking soil tests and every time that soil test was taken, a snapshot of that was issued as a non-fungible token certificate and stored in the blockchain, as you can see there in the left, as the blue block. And the blocks are stuck in uh, up. Uh, on the other hand, Jill had a very, you know, toxic environment. There was like lots of uh, poisons and, you know, chemicals and inputs put onto the farm. But on the surface, they still look the same. So it's very hard to tell them apart. Jack was handpicked by a farmer who nurtured and cared and was really proud of their farm and took photos and videos and stored that on a blockchain technology video service and stored that as the red block on the blockchain in this situation where Jill was automatically picked up. And I know in ag tech, we can get very excited about robots picking food and flying them across the world. Um, but even if that's the case, we kind of want to know that that's been part of the food mileage and the food journey. And one, you know, Jack was washed nicely in, in abundance of biodiversity and grew with other plants and had companion planting and was really, uh, you know, looked after where Jill was kind of mixed up with apples and didn't really go on the right processing line and kind of ended up, you know, a bit mixed and, uh, you know, confused about her identity. But the yellow block here is still tracking Jack's progress in the manufacturing. Jack had an awesome ride with his driver going straight from the farm to the farmer's market. They had good chats and yarns along the way, but Jill got thrown in a box and put in and flown across the world and across a van and a car and possibly even a boat and has lots of miles attached to that particular journey. And again, Jack has another block added to his story in the bottom left-hand corner. So now we're presented with Jack and Jill sitting on a shelf. Which carrot are you going to buy? On a surface, we really don't know what their stories are. Maybe they're both organically certified, but where's the validation? Where's the proof? And as a consumer, how do you know that this is the actual way that uh, this produce was created? And so using technology, um, able to, uh, this is a key, I'm not saying that every bit of carrot is gonna have a code on it, but definitely at a batch level or a box level or a packaging level, we are able even with today's technology to QR code and scan produce and really get to meet the farmer or the grower in the aisles of our shopping center. And so you can see here, while you might've thought that Jack was on the left, they actually had swapped and Jack's now uh, on the right now is on the left. I don't even know if your screen's inverted, but let's go with the, uh, they, they've swapped positions. So thinking that you might know the way that this food has been grown, nothing's going to be able to verify it more, I guess, openly and, and as important than what blockchain technology uh, can do. And we're starting to see a lot of bio-nutrient meters and things to, uh, in the way that we buy food as consumers to say, let's stop buying food kilo and the yield, but let's start by its nutritional value or let's value align with the farmer and the grower and support who are actually doing things that aligns with our values. And because it's all stored on the blockchain, it's online all the time and it's hosted by many computers around the world. Every farm could potentially have a copy of this database on their, their farm linked with Starlink to the internet and be online all the time verifying that this is the way the food was grown, cared for, traveled and produced. And if anything happens along that 
logistic line that isn't quite right, it's very easy to isolate small batches and quality control when things are tracked like this. There are a couple of, I'm not going to name, this is no financial advice or anything like that from different blockchains, but do your own research. There are already chains uh, putting together plans to track food at bulk level. They are also talking about uh, nano chipping where some produce could potentially be tracked down to the item. So that's the food production side of things. That's one model where we can really track and intervene into food logistics and really have better quality control and verifications. Another model that I'm going to share with you today is MetaFarms and MetaTrees NFT, which is a project that I'm working on. Um, five years ago, I kind of got really addicted into soil and haven't stopped digging deeper since then. I've started a podcast. I've partnered with Farming Secrets to turn their DVD business into an online soil learning center during the pandemic and digitalizing all their DVD content. So educating people to learn and geek out about soil is something that really excites me. And uh, the podcast that I have called Secrets of the Soil is also one of those places where I get to have great yarns with people um, MetaTrees is an extension to that. I really wanted to amplify and um, show, do a showcase farm. And so we thought, how can we use NFTs? Now, if you're not familiar, NFTs are what known as non-fungible tokens, and they sit on the blockchain also, and they are image representations. They can be a video, they can be, a, a, you know, a certificate. They're talking about in the future issuing marriage certificates, and I would say that even like your farm organic certification in the future could be issued uh, via NFTs. Carbon credits are also another one that could be issued in NFTs or tokens, and, and there are platforms like Regen Networks who are also doing things like that. So MetaTrees was created in a way of creating a digital representation that sitted on, sat on a blockchain but had a real in real life uh, application. And that's one of the things that a lot of people um, struggle with is they think that the metaverse is going to be digital and sits on a computer and owned by Facebook. Meta was just first, Facebook was the first to change the name to Meta and really has created a lot of confusion. But the metaverse can be created by anyone uh, and different companies could create their own metaverses. Um, we decided to call this project MetaTrees because we wanted to bridge the gap between what can happen in the digital world and NFTs, but also in real life. And so our mission is to buy a degraded farm and use it as a case study or a showcase farm and sell digital trees that are actually represented one for one on the farm and then use regenerative agriculture to regenerate and heal this farm back to an oasis that it once used to be. And so that's the journey that we're on at the moment. And instead of raising capital with investors or using Kickstarter, we decided to use NFTs. So we have 25,000 trees and each tree is individually numbered and you can buy the digital one uh, online that tree will be planted on a farm in New South Wales and you will get to know the GPS locations of that tree, its function on the farm and what species of tree it is. So we really believe that, you know, these billion tree planting projects are great, but culture and growing trees in the masses like that are really great to the way that nature intended to be. And so this NFT is a proof of support. And so while you don't own any part of the farm, what you do say is I've got proof of support of this particular tree and one day you might want to come on the farm and actually view the tree and see it. Um, and if it's a fruit bearing tree, you'll be able to, you know, yield in some of the, the, pro the produce that it creates. So Meta Farms is more about community and documenting the journey, but using NFTs as a way of raising capital and getting people interested into a project and your NFT becomes your ticket to public in future events as well. So we'll be documenting the process and sharing that, learning out loud and open sourcing what we kind of go through along the journey so others can get inspired and empowered to do the, do the same. We're going to be running farm tours and again, your NFT will become your ticket or your access pass. So I'm just trying to show here today that there are different ways that your NFT could give you access to exclusive deals, discounted prices, a lot of those kind of ticket point systems that we participate in today could be turned into an NFT uh, kind of project in the future. Community supported agriculture can also be distributed through an NFT or through a MetaTree um, uh, pass. 
And I really feel like we're coming to a point now where voting with our dollars is the best support that we can do, whether you want to support locally or whether you appreciate a particular value that a way that a farmer is farming, then that is our best way these days to really show the system who we would like to see uh, win long game. So we really want to empower people to know that, you know, voting with your dollars is the best way to steer an industry in a particular way. And so there is a lot of learning curves when it comes to buying NFTs. There's a terminology called minting, where you mint the NFT, and that's all available on our website. And Teal and myself, who are running this project, are really driven to help people buy their first NFT and make MetaTrees their first NFT experience and really understand the bridge between what can happen on the digital world and in real life. And so that's why we also have the ability to buy a MetaTree with your credit card, and then you will be issued your, your MetaTree when, when you are uh, Web3 ready. We're in this weird phase at the moment where we're transitioning from Web2 with what we currently know, social media, um, storing things on the cloud, being a YouTuber, and then moving to Web3. Web I would say we're very early in this NFT, crypto, digital currency, uh, phase. So we kind of call this in the industry 2.5. We're at currently web 2.5. So we're in that, that bridge. My question is, you're going to get left behind and stay in the web one, web two point series, or are you going to start innovating your businesses in the way that you solve your farm problems and move into the web three? Because if history has shown us and left us clues, it's that, uh, everything that people think is a crazy idea and is never going to work and take off such as doing a dance on TikTok, becomes the way that most businesses are now promoting and paying influencers to do a dance and promote their business. So um, are you going to join us into the Web3 phase and uh, make blockchain brings the power back to the people? I'm Regen Ray, and uh, this has been my presentation about blockchain and uh, look forward to the Q&A session if anyone has any questions to dig deeper on this topic. Thanks very much, Ray. What a, what a great Jack and Jill guide to crypto-enhanced uh, provenance.